not every day I get to announce a new member of the Vercada family, but uh, here is the GC31 cellular gateway. So if you're ever in a scenario in which you do not have access to the internet, but the 4G signal is quite good in a particular location, all you need to do is purchase one of these and then use the downstream ports to either connect Vercada devices directly or utilize, for example, a few switches if you need to connect more than two. There are two variants. There is an indoor one, which is slightly smaller, and there, there is this one, which is outdoor, which has not only IP66 rating, but also can withstand extreme temperatures from minus 40 Celsius all the way to plus 50. So let's think about the similarities of the indoor and the outdoor model. Both of these devices come with category 12 LTE, giving you speeds up to 600 megs. In addition, both have not only two downstream ports, so you can connect your downstream devices, but also have two SIM card slots. They work in an active standby mode, and if the gateway loses connectivity over its primary SIM card, it will reconverge in about half a minute or so using the secondary one. Talking about the downstream ports, they are PoE enabled. So if the unit gets 90 watts, so that's the upper limit of PoE++, it will be able to serve 60 watts on either one port or 30 watts on both of them at the same time. And each of these devices will come with a Vercada SIM card making the device plug and play. Just power it, the SIM card will connect to the appropriate carrier and off you go. Before I talk about the differences, it's worth understanding how you can use a Vercada SIM card. So first of all, the device itself, as any Vercada device, will need a license. And that license will get the RMA, access to support, access to any new features, etc. You also have access to the Vercada SIM card and you can run as many non-camera devices as you want. So you can have sensors, access controllers, it doesn't really matter. They don't utilize a lot of bandwidth, so we don't cap that. If you're planning to use Vercada cameras downstream, uh, just know that the device is smart enough to understand that there are cameras plugged in, and it will require an additional license per camera. And that is because the cameras do transmit way more uh, bandwidth, and in order for us to pass down the cost, we will require you to have this additional license. You can also run third-party devices. No worries about that. We don't enforce any sort of uh, limits. Do remember that uh, all the Vercada SIM cards are capped to one gig a month for non-Vercada devices. But remember, you can bring your own SIM. That's not a problem. Most SIMs these days are plug and play. And if they're not, if you actually require to set the APN settings up beforehand, uh, this device actually has a local status page. It's the first Vercada device uh, to do so. So all you need to do is connect to one of the LAN ports. It will give you an IP address by default, as it would to any other devices. And then you go on the local status page and you type in the APN details and click Save. In a lot of areas around the world, 4G might be uh, more cost effective, uh, so I do recommend you having a look around depending on the areas and decide whether or not it's easier and most cost effective to go for a Vercada SIM or utilize your own. So what's the actual difference between the indoor and the outdoor version besides the fact that this can withstand harsh conditions and is IP66 rated? The first thing that you'll notice if you look on the bottom is that you actually have multiple ways to power the device. The indoor version has a barrel jack that will allow you to connect it to any particular socket in the wall, while this one has this option in addition to a regular PoE connection, so you can supply up to 90 watts of PoE++, or a terminal block, making it ideal to hook up to something like a car battery or a solar power array. This device also is the first Vercada device to have a, a GPS inbuilt in it. Uh, so if you're actually trying to use this for mobile applications, uh, you'll be able to, to track it in real time on the map and even see the cell towers that it is connected to. 
On the bottom, we have glands and we su uh, supply multiple sizes as well, just to make sure to accommodate for the different thickness of each of the cables. Last but not least, we do have a couple of accessories, including a 90 watt PoE injector. Remember the PoE injectors we have for multisensors and PTZs are capped at 60. A uh, barrel jack adapter, so that is because the outdoor version doesn't come included with one in the box, the indoor one does. An outdoor rated PoE++ injector and also a device that will allow you to get power from an existing light pole. So how does this look in command? The gateway is just a regular device and you will just add it in within your inventory via serial number or order number. And once you place it in a site, you'll then be able to track its live location, see how many devices are connected to it, its status, the signal strength of the main SIM. And when you click into it, you will get an idea of the real time traffic. And you can change this to reflect uptime latency and signal either in real time or for a certain duration, like the last hour, today, this week, this month, or custom. You can run a speed test. And even within the settings, you can change things such as the address, have a look on certain things such as MAC address and IMEI, modify any sort of SIM card parameters, uh, reboot and identify the device. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, super easy, right? It's plug and play, it's easy to use, and I'm excited to see what other features we'll bring via future firmware updates. But for now, if you have any questions, do uh, drop me a note in the comments below. And remember that as of now, this device is only available in the United States. We're undergoing certification to sell this globally, but at the time of this recording, this is only a US uh, offering.